wrap up our discussion of sampling, sampling methodologies, the last thing that we need to talk about is sampling error. Sampling error is the difference between a sample statistic and its corresponding population parameter. So this would occur when we randomly select 30 individuals, calculate the proportion or the mean, and then we later find that our proportion or, or our mean estimate was off slightly from the actual population value. That, that's the occurrence of randomness in our sampling. Non-sampling error is the difference between the sample and the population that are due to other factors that can be problematic for making estimates from our sample to our population. Things like missing data. When questions are skipped or not answered, that gives us blanks in our data set which can lead to incorrect conclusions from that sample. Difficult populations. There are some individuals that are more difficult to sample. It's either difficult to have access to them or they are less likely to answer questions on a survey. And then non-response error, which could be on the part of the interviewer or on the part of the respondent. Interviewer-based non-response error often has to do with item construction. The way that the items are created creates confusion or there's something wrong with their design. On the part of the respondent, they may become confused or not understand the wording of a certain item or what it's asking about. Coverage error is where the research objective and the population are not aligned. The research question that we have doesn't match the population that we have chosen. Basically, these people don't have that answer. And when we have a coverage error, the conclusions that we draw can be off wildly because we're asking the wrong people about our research question. And then measurement error, which can occur for any number of reasons, like confusing questions that are poorly worded, double-barreled items where we're asking two things of, this, of the same question, biased items or push-polling where we say, this is the case, don't you agree? And that creates a bias in the way that, the, the, that our respondents might occur. Or incorrect answers. Someone meant to mark A and instead they marked B. Their answer, the answer that they chose, doesn't correspond to how they really feel or how they really would answer this question. How then can we minimize this non-sampling error? Carefully define your target population. Know who you're asking and do they have the answers that you're seeking. Carefully design the data collection process and train your data collectors so that they know to follow the procedures. Pre-test your data collection procedure so that you can spot any problems, any errors that are going to occur early on and fix them. And that's what we have to cover this week for sampling and sampling distributions. All right. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next week.